Am I the antagonist for calling my husband selfish and saying no to the arrangements he made? I, F33, have been married to my husband, M38, for two years. He has a nine years old son from his former marriage. He's always been on bad terms with his ex. They had a messy divorce and basically hate each other's guts. It got worse after his ex got remarried. The current problem started when he found out that his ex-wife planned to go on vacation without their son, my stepson. Why? Because her new husband didn't want him to go, probably because it's a romantic getaway. My husband pitched a fit and insisted they take my stepson, but she refused. My husband then brought him to stay with us, not his days, but I welcomed him, and I am mad sure to keep him entertained and happy. All was good till I found out that my husband has booked tickets for a vacation to the same place his ex and her new husband were going, same hotel, same everything. He booked the tickets in mine, and his son's name only. I was confused, I asked him about it, and he said he did this despite his ex and show her she can't exclude his son from a vacation and who the better parent is. He told me he's arranged for everything and all I had to do was take time off work and take his son and go. I was shocked I asked if he was serious, and he confirmed it. I went off on him saying I can't just take time off work and go with his son to a place I've never been before just so he could be one up his ex. He rented about how busy he was otherwise he would have taken care of this himself, but sent me instead. Furthermore, I yelled saying I've got a lot on my plate. I work full time, I take care of my cancer-stricken mom, I clean, cook and take care of my stepson on top of that. He said my boss will understand if I take time off unlike his, but in response, I called him selfish and said no to this arrangement and told him it was final. He flipped his shit on me then told his son that I just said no to a fun vacation for him funded by his dad. I told him to stop it because I have commitments and won't risk losing my job over an unexpected vacation and for what? We just got back from one a month ago. He's been ranting about how I'm wasting his time and money by declining to go and that his son will hate me for this forever. All was good till I found out that my husband has booked tickets for a vacation to the same place his ex and her new husband were going, same hotel, same everything. Sorry to break it to you, but you are married for two years to a dude who's not over the first one. Red flags all over the place. Like what is this story? It's insane. Why is they got divorced in the first place HM? NTA in the last sentence is flat out manipulative and toxic. You have married a man who was not ready to remarry someone else. NTA you are married to a man who hasn't got over his wife, ex, and is willing to hurt his son for some toxic payback. Triangular flag, triangular flag, triangular flag, this will not end well. Run. Don't have a child with this man. He is a terrible husband. He would be even worse as an ex. He will behave the same way with you when you leave him. He's even a worse father. He's using his child to play games and messing with the kid's head for his own childish, petty reasons. He is a negative influence on that kid. Am I the antagonist for not wanting to babysit my boyfriend's children? For context, I bought a house in January. We lived an hour away from his family, and there was a great house in my price range, so I decided we could move up here. He has two kids, one has, forgive me if my terminology is wrong, I'm still learning, stage 3, nonverbal autism. He's almost 8. His other child is 3, and is a typical, high-energy 3-year-old. I myself have a 9-year-old. When I bought the house, I established some ground rules. I don't mind the kids coming over. We would accommodate safe spaces for his kids, especially since one is special needs. I don't mind them staying overnight, but not on weeknights, because my own son has ADHD and I try to keep him on a consistent schedule, and he does struggle with sleep as it is. Furthermore, I also work a full-time Monday to Friday job and need my sleep as well. At some point, it was decided that the three years old stays every Wednesday night. I never agreed to it, but I just let it go. Then, both kids started staying every other Friday. I alternate weekends with my son's father, so I agreed to that, 
but said it could not turn into every other full weekend. The eight years old is a lot of work, and I need my downtime. Maybe that's selfish, I don't know. It turned into every other full weekend, even though I requested it didn't. I did enjoy being kid-free every other weekend. But again, I let it go. BFS mother would come and help with the kids, because BF works at 6 a.m. on the weekends. The weekends are the only time I have to sleep in, I struggle with insomnia, and that's the only time I can catch up on sleep. Now it's been decided that I will be watching the kids every other weekend. I have said no multiple times. I feel like my boundaries have slowly been pushed. BF says he doesn't understand why it's a big deal. It's not every weekend. The weekends are the only downtime I get and the only times I really get to sleep. I don't mind helping with the kids, but getting up at 6 on the weekend is really hard for me. I then spend the next week at work feeling overexhausted and don't perform as well. He is supposed to be looking for a sitter, but I don't think he's looking very hard. I understand it's hard to find someone to care for eight years old. My son's birthday party is tomorrow. I was anticipating having the morning to clean, set up, and decorate. Now I need to get up at 6 a.m. and try to manage all of that on top of caring for the kids. I feel like my boundaries have been slowly pushed and pushed, and I'm just expected to deal with it. I feel like I am not allowed to say no in my own house. Furthermore, I feel like BF chose a job working weekends, also knowing he would have the kids every other weekend, and just expects me to handle it. Am I an asshole? NTA, it definitely sounds like your boundaries are being pushed back again and again. You may need to review your relationship, because if it's happening now, if you get married, I'd say prepare for it to get even worse. Now I need to get up at 6 a.m. and try to manage all of that on top of caring for the kids. Don't do it. You've been more than generous and BF has shown that he will take advantage and push your boundaries again and again. This is his end game. What is yours? You will probably need to kick him out for this to stop. NTA. NTA. Your boyfriend is using you for free childcare and not paying attention to your objections. However, I think you and your boyfriend are long overdue for a conversation about the gestalt of your relationship. Are you and he and the kids a family? Are you and he having a relationship and the kids are only family with their respective bio parents? If you're one family, then you are each taking on obligations to all the kids. If you're not one family, then it's time for him to take on caretaking for his own kids and stop dumping it on you. If he doesn't see what the big deal is about working all week and getting up at six to care for the eight-year-old, then he should do it himself, even if he has to change jobs and not work on Saturdays. Give some people an inch, they'll take a mile. You need to sit down and discuss what you will and will not do. They are his children. It may sound harsh, but he needs to be home to help with his children while they are in his custody. If he has to work, he should not expect other people to pick up the slack and solely care for his special needs child and toddler. He needs to make other custodial arrangements. Am I the antagonist for refusing to ask my son for rent money? My GF, 53 female, and I, 56 male, moved in together just over two years ago. We got together after his mom and I had a divorce. We were the typical not happy together couple that stayed for the children. My son left at 22 after attending trade school to work IT and we divorced afterwards. Now he is 26 and moved back six months after the pandemic happened. He was having some mental health issues and was laid off. My GF wasn't happy but left him stay because he was without a job. He found a new job making $25 per hour again nine months ago. The thing is with the economy situation, I want him to save that money which he has and so I haven't asked him for rent. My GF and I each pay roughly $1,300 plus utilities for our apartment. We had a rent increase of $300 but decided to stay because it was still cheaper than moving. My GF thinks my son needs to step up and at least pay $400 since we can't downsize our apartment because he needs a room and bathroom. 
He also takes long showers, which my GF complains is racking up the utilities bill. I think she needs to start treating him like a son and not penny pinch. She makes more than me 90k versus 70k so she could easily cover the extra cost, but she refuses to because when we moved in together we agreed on half-half and didn't agree on a person who doesn't pay rent staying. But this is my son and I don't want to ask my son to pay rent if the adults can afford it, but my GF is still paying the original $1,300 and only one-third of utilities and refuses to contribute more saying that my responsibility because I bought another person in. We have had multiple arguments about this and the last one she threatened to move out if I don't stop bugging her about paying more when she says my son is living rent free when he has a job. Info, would you be willing to cover two thirds of the rent so your GEF is only paying for herself? YTA he's your son. Of course you don't want to make him pay when he's just getting back in his feet from a mental health crisis. You want him to save and build a buffer. That's what a good parent would do. But he's not her son. She shouldn't have to pay for him. You should. If you don't want to charge him rent, then you need to cover his costs so she isn't having to pay for a grown man she isn't related to who has a job and could afford rent. She's already paying more than her fair share if she's paying half and not a third of everything. You say the adults should handle it, but your son is an adult. I understand you want to help him save money, but he is costing you money and your girlfriend is not his parent, so her being able to cover it shouldn't even be in the equation, it's not her responsibility. I also can't believe you have the audacity to ask for her to pay more when you and your son combined cause rent and expenses to be higher. YTA She's only asking for him to pay $400 a month that is easily doable with him being able to still save money. Your GEF is already paying more than her fair share by paying half when there are three adults living there. Your son should be chipping in some for rent, utilities, and food, and helping out with daily chores and cooking. Am I the antagonist for refusing to grieve with my wife after my aunt's passing? I, 35 male, am married to a woman named Jess, 26 female. We dated for two years before marriage and have been married for one year now. Most of my family has passed away, but I have, or rather had, one aunt from my mother's side. My aunt Jill took an active role in raising me, making sure I was fed and clothed when my mother was unable or unwilling, which was often. We kept in touch, but living across the country from her, she and Jess never met. Yesterday morning I got the news that my aunt Jill had suddenly passed away. I was in shock because she was still young and her life was taken prematurely in an accident. I immediately told Jess. Jess was sympathetic at first, but I told her that I needed a while to be in my room. I went to my room, where I kind of just mindlessly spaced out browsing through a news site. At some point Jess knocked on my door and told me that I needed to talk about it, to which I responded I appreciated the sentiment, but I really just needed to be alone. Jess reacted harshly to this, saying I was an emotional black hole. Then she slammed my door shut and literally stomped away. For the next two hours, every 10 to 15 minutes or so, Jess would open my door abruptly and half shout asking if I was ready to be an adult. I grew increasingly impatient until I just stood up and went out for a walk. When I got back home about an hour later, the chain was locked on our front door, which we never use, and I repeatedly knocked slash pushed the doorbell until Jess said that she'd only let me in if I agreed to talk about what happened. I said no, so Jess walked away. Eventually she unlocked it because I kept pounding on the door and she didn't want me embarrassing her in front of the neighbors. Jess is furious at me now, saying that I'm not really grieving because I'm online. She said that I needed to let her in on my feelings, but I responded that it's hard to let her in on my feelings when she just refused to let me into our house. That set her off even more. Am I being a mega asshole here? NTA Jess needs to back the fuck off. She doesn't get to tell you how to grieve and you don't have to perform your grief for her in a way that she finds satisfactory. Her locking you out is a solid A-H move, as is not giving you space to process how you're feeling. NTA, but your wife certainly is. 
there is no right or wrong way to grieve, and by pushing you into grieving her proper way, she's actually making it harder to you to process your aunt's death. She needs to apologize to you and back the fuck off. Honestly, this is such a red flag. Different people grieve in different ways. If your behaviors were going on for more than a week, she'd be justified in being concerned about your withdrawing from the world rather than tackling the grief. But on the same day you got the news? Not cool. And then locking you out of your own home? That's over the top. This is a very troubling reaction from her. Am I the antagonist for telling my ex's wife and her kids discomfort should not come before our son? I share an eight-year-old with my ex. We broke up when he was one and very early on he's had issues with his speech and with anxiety. He has a stutter and he had extremely delayed speech. He's been in speech therapy for going on six years now. Progress has been extremely slow. My son doesn't talk around new people, and there are some people he knows quite well who he won't talk around because they can be quite insensitive about how my son sounds. It can be hard for people to understand him even without the stutter, but when he does stutter, it's even worse. X met his wife two years ago and moved her and her kids, 14 and 12 now, and after seven months. He mentioned at the time that our son didn't speak around them, so he figured moving them in would be a good way to speed run his ability to talk around them. Right before the wedding, our son fell and was crying for his dad. His stepkids made some comments that really upset him, and because of that, he has never felt comfortable speaking around them. It actually set him right back because he lived with them every other week. He spent a large amount of time around them, and he's just not comfortable with them like that. X spoke to our son's speech therapist and regular therapist and wanted answers on how to fix it. They said there was no easy answer and no guarantees. That his progress at that point had delayed badly because of it. X's wife complained to me that I wouldn't let her change his speech therapist to someone she heard great things about. She mentioned it repeatedly. But through my own research, I realized he was not someone who should be practicing and had many complaints from parents who said he left their kids so far regressed. I ended up getting more custody time because the therapists both agreed his progress would never be as good as it needed to be when he was not talking for such a large chunk of time. X was very unhappy about this, and I do understand, but our son's progress was at stake. My son's speech has improved some more and the regression was helped by living more with me and him freely talking. But he still doesn't like to talk around his dad's wife or her kids. X came to me recently and told me he's tired of it and it makes his wife and stepkids uncomfortable that he has no right to do this to them. My reaction might not have been the best, but I told him their discomfort should not come before our son and that there should be more understanding of why. He told me he shouldn't hold one incident against him. I pointed out how it was treated as not a big deal what happened when to our son, every negative reaction to his speech is a huge deal because he faces it from multiple people. X said I was an A.H. That their comfort in their own home should be of the utmost importance and that our son is not doing anyone any favors with his attitude. Am I the antagonist? NTA if his actual speech therapists are recommending that being in a living situation in which his anxiety increases, it impacts his speech and makes him go silent, is a problem and he shouldn't be there, then something is heavily wrong, perhaps abusive or neglectful about that setting. The fact your ex is so heavily making your son the problem when it is in fact his household, wife and stepchildren makes me think that he and everyone who inhabits that house is abusive. Why is their comfort priority? This is incredibly ableist. Why become a parent if that parenting is conditional on a child not requiring further care and support? I would seek full custody and no longer let your son be around people who can't love and care for him unconditionally. NTA, but what is he advocating for? He sounds like he wants something you aren't agreeing to, so what does he want to do to adjust your son's attitude? NTA, your son needs support he isn't getting at your ex's home. It's that simple. Your sole interest here should be in doing what is best for your son, which you are clearly doing. 
I understand how frustrating it is for everyone involved, especially your son, but your ex is way off the mark thinking that he can attitude adjust his son into being something he's not. It was well established what your son needed before the new wife and kids entered the picture. Their needs are what not having to be inconvenienced by accommodating your son. That's trash. Am I the antagonist for telling my parents I'm not interested in their tears slash drama slash opinion and I won't allow them to talk to my fiancé until they are less emotional? My fiancé, 32 female, and myself, 35 male, have been together for nearly five years. My fiancé is currently 26 weeks pregnant with our little boy. My fiancé has two little girls. The oldest, seven female, is biologically my fiancé's daughter, the youngest, five female, is biologically my fiancé's niece, her sister's daughter, but my fiancé has special guardianship of her so makes all legal slash medical decisions. Important info, both girls have the same last name as my fiancé. I love both these girls with my whole heart, I would do literally anything for them. We are going to get married in about a month, five year anniversary. We are currently in the process of me adopting seven female and adding my name to the guardianship of five female. Due to the legal issues surrounding the five female S case, we can't legally change her last name. Fiancé and I talked and I suggested that the simplest answer was for me to change my last name to the same as my fiancé. I don't want to double barrel my last name as I feel that this defeats the whole point. I want us all to share the same last name. This also means when baby boy is born he will be given my fiancé's, by then mine as well, last name. My parents have always been, in my opinion, obsessed with carrying on our family name. I knew this decision would upset them. I know it's harsh, but my little ones mean more to me than my parents' obsession. Furthermore, I had a sit-down talk with them, mom was crying, dad was angry. Neither understand my decision. They want us to change both girls' names to my current last name. Apparently, that was the obvious decision. Changing my name will obviously bring shame on our family. What will people think? I'll make my parents fodder for gossip. My fiancé did suggest using my current last name as the baby boy's first name. I didn't even suggest this to my parents. My last name is alright, but would be a god-awful first name. I'm not doing that to our son. My mom was demanding I talk sense into my fiancé. Our conversation ended with me telling them I'm not interested in their tears, drama, or their opinion, and I won't allow them to talk to my fiancé until they are less emotional. She's nearly six months pregnant. The last thing she needs is my parents shouting at her for a decision I made. Am I the antagonist for how I spoke to my parents? Am I the antagonist for changing my last name that means so much to them? NTA you are protecting your partner and it seems like your family is stuck in a sense of entitlement. The whole keeping the family name seems very dated in 2022. NTA you are in fact being the best partner and dad anyone could ask for. Sorry your folks are too blinded by a name to see that. And congrats on the wedding and your babies. NTA I just don't understand why this outdated patronymic tradition is such a big deal to some people. While I can understand your parents' disappointment, getting this emotional is irrational. They're asking you to have three people change their last name, even though you legally can't change one, versus one person, you. Which is simpler. As long as you don't mind, they shouldn't mind. It's not the name that matters. It's the person. I don't see what the big deal is, it's just a name. I think what you said was reasonable and as you said it makes sense to change your name. If you change the kids' names it would cause a lot of confusion, especially for the niece. 